Hello and welcome to the series of Rapid Minor Videos. My name is Dr. Marcus Hoffman and I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Technology Blanchardstown and also the principal investigator of this project funded by the Irish National Digital Learning Repository. The series of Rapid Minor Videos was created in close collaboration with Ralph Klinkenberg and Dr. Ingo Merswa, the two founding members of Rapid Minor. More videos as well as additional material to some videos can be found at www.rapidminorresources.com. I would now like to introduce Ralph Klinkenberg, who will talk you through this tutorial. Welcome to Rapid Minor. This video demonstrates how to add noise to a dataset and how to use feature selection to reduce a dataset to features that are relevant and that do not just merely represent noise. So let's start a new process for feature selection. And let's import some data set, like for example the iris data set. And then let's add some noise so we can check the um, noise cancellation ca capabilities and feature ranking capabilities of Rapid Miner. So we can add, for example, four random attributes here and add some class noise and see what the effect will be. So let's place a breakpoint after loading the data for the first inspection. We see the original data set has four numerical attributes and if you look at it in a 3D scatter plot can see it's three easy to separate classes, very clean, no noise. If you go one step further, you see four random attributes have been added and also some class noise has been added, as you can see here. There's red and green points within the blue cloud and there's red and blue points within the green cloud. So there are some random changes in the labeling and there's additional random attributes and for example, if you select three random attributes, you probably see no more correlation in the data. Okay, so we see that is adding noise to the data. Now the question is, can we use Rapid Miner to get rid of the noise again? So yeah, well, obviously we can. The first thing I'd like to do is to use a ranking technique and then a selection technique. So first let's pick an attribute weighting technique, for example using support vector machines. And then let's use a selection technique on top that actually delivers the results of that ranking applied to the example set. So let's select the top four attributes and um, well, see what happens. We've seen the original attribute with four attributes. You have seen four additional noise attributes. This is a result of the weighting. The four original attributes have higher weights assigned to them by the support vector machine method than the random attributes. And if I now select the top four attributes, well, I'm back down to the original attributes again, and that's what you can see over here. So the noise ha at noisy attributes have been successfully removed. Now let's also take a look at an alternative approach, not by first ranking features and then selecting them, but, uh, which is also called a filtering approach because it's independent of a learning task. It's basically just based on some weighting scheme. And you saw before that there's a large number of weighting schemes available using techniques like information gain, gain ratio, correlation, chi-square, or support vector machines or PCA, like principal component analysis. Um, these are good for filtering. First do a ranking and then pick the best attributes. 
So for an alternative approach, let's do something else, a more integrated optimization approach. That's feature selection by performance optimization, in a sense. And now, um, how does this work? Well, it's like a wrapper. That means for each possible combination of attributes tested, this operation needs an evaluation to see how good would a learner perform using these attributes. And so by double clicking, we come to the inside and now we can add an evaluation sub process by adding a new building block, for example, a nominal cross validation, which again inside has two parts, a learning part where we generate a decision tree model here and the model application part we go up one level, this is a cross-validation, tenfold cross-validation, does a tenfold split of the original data set, trains a model on nine parts, tests it on the tens parts, does ten iterations, so each test, each fraction becomes a test set once, and the remaining nine parts are used for training. And I do this for each combination that one of these optimization techniques, um, no matter if it's evolutionary, weight-guided brute force, or backward or forward selection um, uses. So for each candidate solution, we do a complete cross-validation to know how good a particular learner, in that case a decision tree, would perform. And now the particular strategy here, backward elimination, starts with all attributes and then checks if I omit one of the attributes, does the performance get better? And if so, which attribute should I omit so that it gets better the, the most? And so this keeps on iterating as long as it can improve performance by omitting one attribute. And so it'll cancel out noise attributes one after one. Let's just run the process. You can see at the bottom that there's a lot of processing going on. And you can see at the end the process delivers a solution which had three of the four noise attributes removed, only one was left because it was obviously not recognized as noise. You see the ranking where the original attributes all were kept and one random attribute was also kept, but the other three random attributes were kicked out as indicated by the zero. And you also see what the performance was of the best solution. It had an accuracy of 88%. Um, that is. When presented with similar but unseen data, the prediction accuracy is 88%. So now we have seen two different approaches for attribute selection, one based on filtering, first ranking, then selecting the top attributes, and another one based on a wrapper approach where you have a strategy for generating new candidates and for each candidate set of attributes you do a complete evaluation, like for example, across validation. Thank you very much for your attention. For further information on RapidMiner, please go to www.rapidminerresources.com or www.rapid-i.com. If you are interested in upskilling, please go to www.itb.ie, where you will find more information about our distance learning MSc in computing science, in business intelligence, and data mining. Many thanks to the Irish National Digital Learning Repository for funding this video.